Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belongs. They are weak, but he is strong. Yeah, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Glory to God. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus loves me. It is an affirmation. Mm -hmm. It's a testimony. It so happened to be true. Oh, I have some good news. He loves you too. Hallelujah. He loves your children. He loves your family. He loves your neighbors. Jesus loved all of us. He didn't come for just the Jews, even though he said at this time, this season, it's for the Jews. But he already set up the provisions for the Gentiles, those who are not of the Jewish faith. He loves everyone. He doesn't discriminate. For those who want to practice that stuff, you are going against what Jesus taught. Hallelujah. We give all the honor to him today. Oh, we come to get into his word. Hallelujah. So we ask that you go ahead and turn to Nehemiah 4. Mm -hmm. This is going to be, I'm not going to get a key verse because it all builds up to our title, which is the people and the wall come together. The people come together. And the wall is being rebuilt at Judah. Glory to God. Let us go into prayer and let us get into this world. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we do thank you for another opportunity. As we go into Nehemiah 4, we see where the people get organized. You see where they work together for the common purpose of rebuilding your wall so that they can serve you in a manner that you want them to be served. So, Heavenly Father, let this be a blessed message. Let this be a message where the amens mean we got this and we can move forward. So, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There's nothing like a Tuesday evening Bible study, Fresh Manor Ministries of Miracle. We definitely welcome you. Mm -hmm. Pastor Smith. Oh, yes, my wife, Pastor Michelle Smith, is the lead pastor. I'm assistant pastor, the elderly Anthony Smith. We have our spiritual guide who is, oh, yes, oh, yes, apostle. Glory to God, Mathena Ashley. She's been a big help to this ministry in so many ways. We thank her. We thank all ministers for what you're doing. Those who are preaching the truth, yes, continue. Good God, got something great for you. For those in the offices, continue. Don't give up. I know it gets tiresome. I know what it's like because I have to work in the office because we got a small ministry. I know what it's like. Um, for those, Heavenly Father, in the pew, I call it the amen section. Don't give up on Jesus. You keep on doing what you can do according to the faith that was given to you. Glory to God. And for those who are looking and searching, come on in. It's time. The timing is right, right now to come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people in the wall come together. Let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray for this message. Pick us up, lift us up, and let us all be on one accord from this point forward. As we go through this, let us not get tired. It's pretty long. In Jesus' name, amen. I had to throw that in there because this is a great message, but you got to endure. <laughs> you can't give up on it. Quickly, let me go over uh, Nehemiah 1, 2, and 3. We know at the beginning, Nehemiah prayed because his country, Jerusalem, is in ruins. The people there are suffering. He prayed to God to send him the help that he needed. Chapter 2, God sent him the help. Oh, yes, the king was already touched. He didn't just give Nehemiah what he needs. God put it on the king's heart to give him more in excess, overflow. That's how my God works, in the overflow 
and he did this with Nehemiah. He gave him not only the, the materials, he gave him manpower, captains over these men. So Nehemiah came ready prepared, gave him letters to where he go to the other governors and even the, uh, the, uh, the overseer of the forest. They all had to let Nehemiah have his way. Whatever he needed, they had to provide because they got a letter from the king. Hallelujah, glory to God. And we know who put it on the king's heart. Our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, chapter 3. Okay. Chapter 3. As I went through it, I was ready to go and teach it. And I realized something. No one's going to get anything out of it. If you're really going to get anything out of 3, you have to read it for yourself. It does talk about how the people came together. Mm -hmm, how they had their particular assignments. And it told their names and their assignment. The problem that I had with it, those names, I could learn those names. I could study those names for years and I get them right. So I decided that's best for me to leave that part alone. Read it at your own leisure. Don't leave it out. Go back and read through it. And you'll see how they work together to build this wall of Jerusalem. Now, we're on four, and we know the enemy is seeking to stop this wall from being rebuilt because if this wall is put up, they can't continue the sins that they was doing to the Hebrew people. Let's go ahead and get into the word. I'll read each verse, give you a quick overview of it, then move to the next. I think there's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on this chapter, I could go down right quick. Let me see how many verses are there. Okay. 22, 23. All right, we should be able to do it in about 25 minutes. If it goes a little longer, please take it for love. Glory to God. Verse 1 reads, But it came to pass that when Sam Valet, he's an evil one, heard that we, Nehemiah is talking, that we rebuilt, I'll say rebuilt because that's what they're doing, the wall, he was rough. Oh, he was angry. He was mad. He didn't like this. And took great indignation and mocked the Jews. So in other words, when Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem, he was angry and upset. Mm -hmm. He started making fun of the Jews. This happened a lot today in politics. I never ever noticed. Some people, when they can't get things their way, they just start throwing out names and things like this. <sighs> well, when you're in the world, you think like the world. Let's keep move. Let's move on. Amen. So that's what they was doing as well. All right, verse two. And he spoke before his brothers and the army of Samaria. Now this is Sandal, the evil one, speaking to these people, and said, "What do these feeble Jews, these weak Jews, will they fortify themselves? Are they going to protect themselves, make themselves stronger, so they could go against the king?" Is what he's getting at. They're trying to set this up. Will they sacrifice? You know, I'm not sure what they want to sacrifice to these idol gods is what they're probably thinking about. Will they make an end in the day? Oh, yes. At the end of the day, will they come and say, we, we are our own country. We are no longer under King Assyrius. Glory to God. Will they revive the stones out of the heap of the rubbish which are burnt? Everything was burnt down. Jerusalem was in ruin. And he's saying, are they going to really take these things right here and, and, and make them good again so they could be used? <laughs> they was making fun of the Jews. But they don't know something, that God is with them. And if God is for you in your life, whatever you're going through, I don't care how rubbish it may look. If God is for you, no one can take it away from you. Hallelujah. You got to stand fast and don't let them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's move on. Three. Now. Tobiah, he's another one, the Amorite was by him, okay? And he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up it, he shall even break down their stone wall. He's saying, look, whatever they're building there, if a little fox were to just walk on it, it's going to fall apart. Amen. <laughs> he's making fun of them. That's what he's doing. Okay, four. Hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised. This is Nehemiah. Lord, we've been teased. We've been making fun of. And turn their reproach upon their head. Oh, Lord, vengeance is yours, not ours. 
and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Okay, Nehemiah prayed and said, Our God, listen to our prayers. Hallelujah. These men hate us. Look what they're saying to us. Sambalit and Tobiah are insulting us. They confront of us. Make bad things happen to them. He's praying a prayer. God, these are your enemy because they're our enemies. Make them ashamed. Like people taken away as prisoners. Make them feel that way. Five. And cover not their iniquities. And let not their sin be bothered out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Now, they doing all this in front of the people who has to do the work. I have to ask you a question. Do you think this is help? I was going to say building them up. <laughs> do you think that this is encouraging them or discouraging them? I think it's, you know, if you hear people being teased and being made fun of, it make you feel like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? That's what they're trying to do. Okay, six. So, build we the wall. Nehemiah still talking. So, we built the wall. And all the wall were joined together until the half day off. Somewhere in the middle, it was coming together. For the people had a mind to work. He had some workers. He had gave that speech. I don't know if you uh, went to Nehemiah too, but please do so. He gave a wonderful speech to them about why they should build it. And Tobiah and all these other evil folks need to stay away because they have nothing to do with the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Verse 7. But it came to pass that when Sandalit, Tobiah, and the Arabian, and the Ammonites, and the uh, Aphrodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very rough. The enemy was very sad. Because this wall is being rebuilt. In spite of all that they've done, all the discouragement, all the things they are saying about the Jews, people are working hard. Anyhow, glory to God. Verse 8. And conspire all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. They're trying to get all these people to come against us. 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So here is Nehemiah, really strong leadership. He done set up um, watches where they could keep an eye on the enemy and be ready to move. He even as we read the men, he even made plans on what to do if the trumpet blows, where they should all meet and how they should meet. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go ahead to 10. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burden is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. They're saying the ruins are so bad. There's so much garbage around us that we can't move the stuff in that we need to rebuild the wall. Then once we get there, we got to move it out the way so we could climb to a you know a point to where we could work on the wall. But it's too much garbage that we have to take care of first. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And our adversary said, the enemies, the ones making fun of them, said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to stop. So this the enemy telling them, oh, we're going to come upon you and you're going to have to stop working because it's going to be too late. We're going to be ready to destroy you. Verse 12. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Then the Jews, living amongst the enemies, a lot of them were scattered about around Jerusalem, came and said this to us. They said it ten times to them. Our enemies are all around us. They are everywhere we turn. Let's see how Nehemiah deals with this through the grace of God. 13. Therefore said I, Nehemiah talking, in the lower places behind the wall. Okay, he said people in the lower places behind the wall. And on the higher places, said people up high. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. He set up 
people all around the world to be on lookout, to be ready for this surprise attack. 14, oh, we're there, we're there. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Nehemiah is talking, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Ah, he's bringing to their remembrance. God is with us, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your house. He's telling them, God is with us. How could anybody be against us? It won't work. Just won't work. No weapon form shall prosper. Okay. 15. And it came to pass when our enemies heard, mm -hmm, oh yes, Lord, that it was known unto us, <laughs> and God had brought their counsel to naught. The things they plan is not going to work because we know about your plan and we don't make preparations. Glory to God that we return all of us to the wall. They was able to go back to the wall and look and listen to this. Everyone unto his work. Everyone now they can focus on work again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't stop God's work. You can't stop God's work. 16. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants walked in the work. Okay, they worked hard. Half of his servants. And the other half of them held up the spears. So yeah, some working and some guarding. Hallelujah. The shields and the bows and the halogens, that thing they wore for protection from arrows and someone trying to stab them. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They had the rulers even set up. Leaders, they were ready. And the enemy come, we're working right now. But if they come, don't think all we're doing is working. We're prepared to fight if we have to. Nehemiah is showing so much leadership. All right, 17. And that is coming from the grace of God. They, hallelujah, order went too far. They was built on the wall, those who were working on the wall, and they that bear the burden, though that have to sit back and watch and stay ready to fight, with those that ladder, everyone with one of his hands walked in the work. Now, everyone is working. Even the ones who are looking, they got a, a weapon in one hand and a brick or something to help build a wall on the other. Maybe a bucket of water to help the people, you know, as they work, give them something to drink. Everybody was doing two, do two tasks. Glory to God, glory to God. And with the other hand, held a weapon. Mm, mm, mm. 18. For the builders, the ones who were building the wall, everyone had his sword girded about his side. Even the builders had a sword next to them. And so built, and they continued to work. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. There's one they had to blow that trumpet in case the enemy is coming. He was right beside Nehemiah, so he could give everybody instructions on what to do. 19. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people. The work is great and large. It's a lot to be done here. And we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. Now you realize, well, we're making progress, but we're too spread out. If the enemy come, they could focus on that one little area and destroy them, destroy the wall even. We're going to have to assemble somehow together. 20. Four more to go. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, whenever ye hear the trumpet, we draw ye theater, theater unto us. Come to where I am, wherever there may be. I know we're all scattered about, and we're not going to know what to do. So I'm telling you right now, you'll probably see my flag. You'll see my army, my captains. Come to where I am. Where the trumpet is sounded. To make it simple, he's going to tell them, Our God shall fight for us. If you come where I'm at, you're under the protection of God. Don't try to fight it on your own. Okay, 21. So we labor in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning until the stars appeared. They continue to work, but holding their weapons just in case 
enemy was to come upon them. You better believe the enemy was looking. When the enemy knows that you are prepared by the word of God. Now, I'm not talking about the physical fight. I'm talking about the spiritual fight we have to go through as Christians. You got many who want to bring you down from it. But when they know that you know the word of God and you're not going to, you're not going to move from it, they will have to just leave you alone. The devil had to get away from Jesus because Jesus didn't fight him with the angels with weapons. He fought him with the word of God. It was too much for the devil. <laughs> Woo, my Lord. Okay, 22. Likewise, at the same time, I said unto the people, let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem. So now look, we just spread out. I'm not talking about the building or the wall, but where are we staying at? Come into Jerusalem, so we'll be prepared. That in the night they may be gods to us. They'll be, see, if you come into Jerusalem, you are there. You can see when the enemy's coming, you can be a god for us. You can let us know. So we can blow that trumpet and be ready to fight. He's thought about this. Through the Spirit of God, he's working this, as they say. And labor on the day. And we'll labor in the day because you're close. You know how to walk that far. You know how to come from the suburbs into the city and work. You already be here. Good thinking. Last one, 23. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the man of the God which follow me, none of us put off our clothes. They kept their clothes that they was wearing because you may have to fight. You need to be ready. You don't need to no time to get dressed at that point. Saving that everyone put them off for watching. Now, they did wash their clothes because they take them off for that. All right. That concludes Nehemiah 4. And what we see here is that Nehemiah they made preparation for two things. He had to bring the people together to rebuild this wall. He needed organization. As we, If you read in three, you see how he got the names of what tribe or what persons were responsible for this area of the wall or the, the gates or whatever. Everyone had a little job and they worked well together. But the enemy was trying to break it up. Oh, look at them. They're wasting their time. Oh, Nehemiah, you're trying to, you're trying to take over the king. Mm -hmm. You want to be the king of Jerusalem, don't you? It didn't work. He's well prepared mentally, physically, and most of all, spiritually. I pray that you have that same kind of mentality. You are prepared because the enemy is going to come after you. The devil told God personally, I've gone out to see who I could seek and devour. Whoever, whomever, that includes Elder Smith, that includes you, whoever he could seek out, he's going after them. But when you know you got that word of God, he will slither away like he did when Jesus gave him the word of God. Man can't live by bread alone, but every word that proceed out the mouth of our heavenly father couldn't take it. It's too much. I pray today, you got something out of this. We see this wall. Is being rebuilt. Then they could go inside and work more on the homes, the stores, everything else inside of Jerusalem. But the wall had to come up first for their protection. I thank God for this. I'm blessed by it. If you have any questions about this lesson, please contact me. It should be in the description. I've been very careful about putting it there. But smithleanthony7 at gmail.com. If you wish to give an offering, please. Go to Cash App, dollar sign, FMMM306. Hallelujah. We will pray that God will multiply the offering on your behalf as well. If all hearts and minds are clear, we will close out chapter 4 of Nehemiah with the benediction. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this message today. I pray that someone is better off now than what they were before they came on because they know if God is with you, no one could be against you. We thank you for this word as we prepare for chapter 5, Heavenly Father. Oh, yes, give us that encouragement. Oh, yes, on that like they try to discourage the Jews. Oh, yeah, let us have that encouragement to keep moving forth, to keep reaching for the higher calling. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, we close this prayer, but we won't close praying. In Jesus' name, amen 
Amen. Amen. You have a blessed week in Jesus. Next Tuesday, 7.30, here on YouTube, Fresh Man of Prayer Page. Please join us. Amen.